Hello, everybody, and welcome to New Comic Book Day Book Club. I am John from John's Comics with Kids, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Alec from Whitewell Comics. Hi, I'm Alec from Whitewell Comics, uh, but John is my co-host. <laughs> I think that's the way co works. It's just co. We cohabitate. And with us, special guest tonight, we have the one and only Panda, I Got Issues. This is my show now, and you are my co-host. This is a hostile takeover. <laughs> the chat is now here in person. I won't yeah, troll so, as much from this angle, but we'll see. I was going to say, how boring is the chat going to be now? <laughs> well, Hulk, it's still, still going to be pretty great. We got a great chat. Hulk is already in there. In fact, there's already 17 people in here. Um, so I'm going to give a few shout outs if you guys have anybody in the chat that you want to shout out. But obviously, Sasquatch is, was the first one in here. Wing Nuts. Sorry, Wing Nut. Hulk Nuts. Uh, Doomed and Confused. I was chatting with earlier today. Uh, he did an awesome post. Uh, Kachung is in here. Comic Books NYC. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anybody? Uh, Issues is in here himself. You're already in here chatting. Fire Guy Ryan, Economics and Comics, Bake the Snake, uh, Richard B. Smith, what's up? And my other uh, my other moderator besides Fire Guy Ryan, Jeffrey Comic-Con Henson is in here. Hey, you want to see something interesting? I'm curious what that means. I I'm worried. Joe Ryan is in the chat. Necro God Comics. <laughs> You're still not a mod, no. I don't, I don't trust you. I, don't I haven't, I haven't earned that yet. I don't trust you with that power. That's too dangerous. That's, that's fair. You shouldn't. That's because all the time you're in here with me, you're talking with me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You should, uh, you should make me a mod. I'm trustworthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then you'd have to be able to control things with pause. It's very difficult. I got hands. <laughs> so we are here tonight. We're talking about Black Hammer, specifically uh, the director's cut, which dropped today for issue one. Or not. Uh, I had never read about. this until today, but obviously, Alec, you knew about it in advance. Yeah, so I had to fall back on my original copy because um, my shop didn't get it today. And so hopefully not too much changed. I can't tell you anything about that. Have you read both uh, issues? I should just call you issues. I don't know. You can uh, call me Panda. <laughs> Mr. Panda, sir. <laughs> Well. I, have Lord read Panda. Both. I have read both. I was a little confused when we picked this last week, and I got confused between the comic book Black Hammer and the most common uh, searched uh, searched phrase on a Hulk Nuts internet browser. <laughs> so it was a little <laughs> difficult, but uh, I got the right. I got the right one today. No, you did what you did well. You got the right one. Yeah, I'm so, proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> So I have been calling this a horror comic all week, and I will say the first thing I noticed right off the bat was compared to Gideon Falls, which I read in black and white for a director's cut as well, this did not feel like a horror comic. Also, theme for tonight is black and white, pandas and comics. Yeah, it wasn't by accident. <laughs> and, and beards, <laughs> black and white beards. <laughs> So for me, it just doesn't feel like horror. Now, maybe that happens later on. Maybe maybe some of the later issues in the series go a little more horror, but it didn't feel like horror to me. Um, I think there are moments that I say would fit into the horror genre, but it, I've only I've read the first three, and it's I feel like more of a superhero sci-fi story. But th there's like little moments that pop in where I'm like. Ooh, that's scary, or that's creepy, or whatever the case may be. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I, I'd have to agree with that for sure. I mean, I think it's more of a sci-fi type of story than than horror. Um, I guess it's a weird classification. I think you brought up Gideon Falls. Gideon Falls is like a, a horror book. Totally. And this is on a, a totally different wavelength uh, than that. Then reminded me a little bit of like Bendis's Powers run, as far as. A different way to look at superheroes, a little more adult, a little more a dark version of superhero genre. TJ Watson in the chat. Hello, TJ. And uh, Joe Ryan Comics agrees with me. is isn't so much horror. It's got elements, though. So, Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, does anybody want to jump in on page one, get us started going here? I, I mean, I don't mind doing it. And I, 
for me, you jump right into farm life and this guy is speaking to nobody, just kind of this farmer just talking to nobody here. It's talking to the cows. It's, uh, it's an inner monologue. I think that's all right. It's not actually because it's actually like I talk to myself all the time and nobody it's spoken really aloud. bothers me about it. <laughs> he talks to the cows, the pigs, the f whole farm in general. And it's a great way to set up like normalcy, a normal everything. And then he gets to the little girl on the porch who uh, basically cusses him out, smokes a cigarette and flies away. And then you're like, OK, we're not uh, it's not normal, it's not normal. Yeah, so, something weird's going on. This this isn't your uh, average farm. Alec is especially quiet tonight. I don't know. Is he reading the chat? Is there something funny in the chat I'm not aware of? Uh, <laughs> Jeffrey Comic Con being a goof. Sorry, it's hard. It's hard for me to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I should throw out. So if you don't know, I got issues. His link to his channel is in the chat. Hit Hulk Nuts's link is in the chat. And the link to their video they did together, their sort of inaugural video, um, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. It's, it's linked in, this, uh, in the description as well. It was a great live stream. It was their first live stream. They did a great job. You should totally, totally check it out. So it's, it's linked down below if you, uh, if you don't you get should, enough Panda. You, you should subscribe to Hulk Nuts rather than me because pandas don't own computers. And I also, I also trolled the hell out of that chat. <laughs> he, he did that was a trophy for that that was impressive <laughs> stuff that was speechless <laughs> all right so uh, back to the story go ahead alec you want to say something yeah right. so uh it it definitely um there's a lot of kind of i don't want to say like misdirection but a lot of uh question marks for this book where it's like it sets up a lot of stuff that it it leaves you hanging a little bit where it's like oh well that's an interesting tidbit and like oh that's an interesting tidbit and it doesn't i mean it it very intentionally well and i think it it's sort of it feel for me the whole time i was thinking of it feels the sort of antithesis of all the stuff you've been complaining about uh, exposition when we do these when when you see a bad version of exposition this is a really good version of exposition people are using pronouns like it so because they're not going to flat out just say all the things they would say to a, a complete stranger among each other they're going to talk in a way where things are really vague yeah and, and, uh, and sure and people talk about their lives and talk about their pasts and stuff like that but they don't do it in a way where it's like this it's happened funny. then this happened then this happened it's like oh i'm sad because like you know what are you There's, thinking about oh i'm thinking about this thing because like you know no you know you can say like the way she explains that she's a nine-year-old girl instead of an adult, but she doesn't just say, I don't like being nine. Mwah. Remember that I used to be older than this? Like it comes out through the story. Yeah. And again, they leave gaps, right? They're not going to just explain it all to us. There's gaps and the gaps are the fun part. Like trying to figure it out is the fun. I think of this issue for me was a lot of like, Hey, they're going to jump to this random breakfast group and you're just like there's a robot there's a ghost there's a tree man i love that head. farmer and it's just like they're not going to explain what's happening you're just going to have to hold on tight and 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 catch whatever little bits you can you can't skip any dialogue boxes or thought boxes you need every little piece she misses her boobs yeah i, I miss i miss them sometimes i mean Your boobs yeah Everybody likes boobs. No, I mean, not everybody. Boobs. Don't, don't generalize like that. At some point in your life, you got to really like them. Usually, right at the beginning. Right at the beginning, everyone <laughs> usually likes boobs. Yeah. No. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. So we check in we get, right there. We, <laughs> we get this little breakfast moment, followed by the exterior of the farm the crow sitting on the tree waiting for something and then the little girl up on the roof and the stick man coming to have what could be a really exposition filled moment but like you said it, it's it's really beautifully uh, done and, and light on dialogue spoilers he is a, a martian not a stick not guy. a stick man no but I, when i look at him he, he reminds he, me he looks he looks woodish yes and i'm okay. seeing him 
definitely I'm seeing him in black and white. I can't yeah. see the color. If he, he, he he's got a green skin or a purple skin, I'm, I would probably be less inclined to call him a tree. But if he has, I just pictured him with brown skin. So like a tree. He looks like Groot to me. No, oh, yeah, he's kind of Grootish. But he talks um, more. They, they did, the, the one character does cross the line in one scene, but, so I in just have to mention it. So I, 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 no, in the diner scene, the cop flip-flops, he changes sides. And so again, you have these little moments where there's a single panel that shows somebody yeah. in, a, in a cape flying over the city. I, I love those panels. They're, or, they add so much. Or, or somebody, you know, with a sword fighting giant insects. But it's just tossed in as if you can tell these are things they're thinking about while at the same time the conversation is using, a, again, a lot of pronouns. Things like, do you, do you miss it the way it was? And it's, they're not, they're not going to go out now and say, hey, do you miss when we were superheroes? Yeah, because no one talks like that. Nobody does. And they wouldn't refer to them themselves as that. I just like the use of pronouns as a way to sort of draw out the tension but feed us just enough to keep us on the trail. What, you lost me at exposition. What's going on? So. What, what's uh, <laughs> what what I don't I don't know what a panda's preferred pronouns are. Uh, we, them, they. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah. So I I don't have an open book, but yeah, in the uh, just because I you know I, to jump slightly to the end, I enjoy this book, but. I don't want to be unfair and not call out things I call out on other books that I don't like as much. And yeah, it's just like, I, just pay attention. And there was no reason for it either because like you could have just had the word bubble on the other side of them. And it's, it just, that bugs me, man. That bugs me. Sorry. <laughs> I got my pet peeves and I, I, no, hey, I was in a movie not too long ago with my wife and we saw some, they jumped, they cut, and they jumped, they crossed the line in the, in yeah. the editing. No, which no, for me, I notice it more in film than I notice it in panels, just because the movement, you, 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 I feel like I catch it's it. A, it's like not a thing anymore. People don't care about it. In movies, it's totally frustrating because you can get really confused as to where people are looking and what's happening. Yeah. And people I don't, don't care about the craft anymore. <laughs> the craft? I don't, no, you don't talk to artists. <laughs> I, you know, remember that movie, The Craft? Oh geez, yeah. that's what I'm talking like about. That, that, on us? that that movie is uh, does not cross the line, figuratively or literally. <laughs> wow, we're derailing here, folks. What's going on? I'm gonna try to keep us going. It's hot <laughs> here. We, go, we go in the barn, and there's the robot guy building some crazy machine, and the ghost guy, which I don't, Cur you know, again, I can't Cur remember Colonel the name. Weird. Yeah, Colonel Weird comes floating through the wall. He's my favorite. And, and they have a little sort of conversation about things. And we start to see that the Colonel is definitely suffering from memory issues because he keeps love, repeating himself and asking questions. I love if he when he asks if he's uh, building himself a mate. Twice. Yeah. 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 He's that's, got dementia or something. I don't want to I don't want to get too far ahead either, but I know that some people didn't get the director's cut or you know, I guess we'll talk sort of a little bit about whether we liked it or not. But I, I think some of these characters are done a disservice by being in black and white. Yeah. Uh, and I think for me reading it, knowing that I had read it originally in color, when you look at, you know, that same panels in, in color. Wow. Uh, and, and you see the characters and you see kind of the colonel disappearing back into the, you know, the negative zone. Like I feel the the color gave it a lot, and so taking the color away, to me, kind of hurt my rereading of this story. And I think for someone who never read it in color, they may not like it just because of that. And I know that's a gimmick of the director's cut versions, but it's. I agree, of, and I think it's a gimmick that's crap, in my opinion. Like I, I don't even see why the what's the point. It's just it's not it's like just a way. It's not like Batman Noir where they where they're really adding to the gritty noir of it or whatever. And this is like I, yeah, but honestly Batman. it frustrated me reading Gideon's Falls. Gideon yeah. Falls. And I I ended up really disliking Gideon Falls. And everybody's telling me it's amazing and I read it and I was like I think it's boring as heck and not really interesting. But things but, like 
like Batman black and white or, you know, and anything like that, they're designed to not have color where this was not, this was, was drawn with the anticipation of color being added. Or um, even Walking Dead. Like I, I loved the way they used black and white in the early trades I read of Walking Dead. I thought it was really powerfully used. Uh, yeah, a lot of books uh, here. I got one right here, a book called Local. I'm going to flip to a random page. Oh, that's a story break. There you go. Like, I don't think that needs color, but it's also was drawn for black and white. So, and I, I felt that way when I read Sin City. Yeah, you, the, you, the you're going to ink something a lot differently if you're. Right, like I, yeah, exactly. I think here's another good example, too. Right, right after that. See when she's like coming down with the Martian. Can you guys see that? Yeah. He's yeah. just kind of like an empty space because that's that's how the border was drawn. But then when you when you take that same panel and you look at it in color, it, it's oh damn. Right. It's a it's a huge difference from just some like outline to an actual character. Yeah, it's a it's a weird choice. Sasquatch, that's a weak joke. You can do better. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so it, <laughs> it might have that that's, that's pretty good. It, it might have <laughs> been part of my dis what I did not like about Gideon Falls, and I will say I do owe that another try because a lot of people were telling me it was like the I don't know indie book or whatever of the year. Um, so I I bought the director's cut to give it a shot. I didn't want to buy the trade, you know. I just wanted to give the f one issue a try. Um, but I will say that I enjoyed Black Hammer a hell of a lot more. I think. Jeff Lemire tends to write um, bigger stories. So I feel like a lot of times his issue ones don't s deliver as much of like a punch as some other writers do just because like he's got something bigger in mind and he's not going to do the thing that I hate, which is rush into stories, which is I think one of the reasons why I like him so much, but I've read a lot of his stuff in, um, you know, a lot of his older stuff in trade and it, it reads so well that way. Um, like, uh, Essex County and underwater welder. And, um, you know, I'm sounding like a real indie snob right now, but no, I mean, <laughs> uh, those are books I, I, I've only heard well, of Essex County. Well, you know, that's, that's a good example of when trades can be effective because you, it's like binge watching a show on Netflix, right? You can you can get it all and feel fulfilled with with knowing what happens right away. And some of his books, when you're when you're reading them one issue at a time, you have to really commit to the to the book in order to make it two or three or four issues to to really start to see the story like ha have some growth. Yeah, and I know this isn't uh, your other show. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry, but to go on my high horse a little bit, I a big pet peeve of mine is writers who write for trades. Like if you're going to write for a trade, just put out a graphic novel. Um, you mean like because they tell a story with a specific six issue arc only in mind, nothing bigger or, or broader. Is that, like I, I feel like saga, I know you love it and I read it for a very long time. But the thing that started bothering me is that like, he was clearly writing for the trade market. He wasn't writing for the comic market. That's what I mean. It's not that you're writing with the anticipation of it being a six issue arc. I'm fine with that, but you're writing with the anticipation that your audience is going to be trade readers and not comic readers. How is that? But like, what's the, what's the difference in, in your mind? You mean like that an individual issue couldn't stand on its own? Um, yeah, that like, I guess I don't know. It's it's hard to describe. Walking Dead does it, I think, and Saga does it, and um, you know, and and I guess more power to them because they're hugely wildly successful. But if you read something like, you know, an older series that is, I would say, equally as popular, something like Preacher, you don't like read them comparatively and see how the stories flow. Oh, Panda's mm. on the move. Yeah, no, Panda's all over the place. I don't know what's going on. He's got to, is he going to use the bathroom on air? 
<laughs> gotta go. You know, you gotta go. <laughs> Continue, please. I'm listening. Oh, oh, man, I was making a joke. <laughs> but hey, uh, do bears <laughs> shit in the toilet? Yes. <laughs> do, do bears crap on air? Oh yeah. man. Facts. Well, this yeah, is so, no, I mean, wiping this is a part because you get you get it in like your your paw hair. <laughs> this is a true first. Yeah, right. yeah. Wiping a panda butt's like trying to get peanut butter out of a, a shag carpet. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! There he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So black so hammer. There's a story about the Black Hammer or something. Yeah. Oh, you guys want to see the Black Hammer? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, anyways, I... <laughs> nice. <coughs> All right. I'm back. We're good. We're live. We're live. Thanks for... Thanks for coming on this journey with me. <laughs> <laughs> that that journey, P, I can do better. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So as the story progresses, for me, you know, the uh, idea that they're waiting for something, that it's an important anniversary for these characters that have been stuck here, unable to go somewhere else that they would prefer to be. And uh, in preparation, they uh, a group of them go into town and the Martian character, the Groot character, <laughs> morphs into something more human looking mm -hmm. and they head to town but like there's this lady yeah. um with but the with the crow watching and waiting another panel that looks great in color and the creepy person in her window oh i didn't even notice that i guess i wasn't looking close enough right behind her yeah i see everything oh there you go she just has it pulled up yeah, for, for some re for some reference for those of you who haven't seen it Continue, sorry, continue. Yeah, so in, in town, we get a little sense that they're not necessarily uh, joiners, that they've been, for the most part, pretty antisocial in this new life that they're living. Hot alcohol, not alcohol. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a that's a lie. That's a lie. It seems like the only person who's been social is, is it Abraham? Uh yeah. has a girl that he kind of likes, even though she's the, I guess, related in some way, like was married to the town sheriff. Um, and everybody else seems to like not know a whole lot of people. At least we don't get a sense of that. And uh, it all comes to a head with the little girl who's clearly not a little girl. They've made reference to that. Um, oh, there it is. That's the panel right there. That cross the line. The Down the bottom. the bottom. The bottom one. Okay, sorry. I'm, uh, oh, right here. And then when you flip to the next page, they, they flip sides again. Oh, I see it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so she uh, she steals cigarettes and gets caught, which means uh, Abraham's now in hot water, and uh, the sheriff just wants to make a show because he doesn't want anybody dating his ex-wife or whatever. Right. And, I mean, why would you? And then you have this one little panel thrown into this like moment of like, yeah, you know, I love that where he's like, what are you going to do sure. about it? And he's like thinking to himself, yeah, I, I could whoop your ass. Yeah. There's this moment when Abraham thinks, well, in my old, in the old days, I just knock your block off. Like I could do that. I love the hat flying. Yeah. Right. The sheriff's hat, the, the, that hey, sort of like Joe. hat just flying off there. Uh, but of course he doesn't, and they ended up they end up going back to the house, and then of course the time comes eight o'clock or whatever when they have to go out and celebrate uh, whatever anniversary the hammer, the the titular hammer. Yeah, so they float out. Everybody sort of rolls out to the spot where there's this hammer laying on the ground, like Thor's hammer, dropped on the ground, and the lady with the crow shows up. So it's clearly something they all have been waiting for 10 years later. And it seems like the big difference this time is Abraham is saying a big F you to everybody. Yeah. Screw you guys. Yeah. I'm tired. I've been trying to make this work and you guys are all just hissing and moaning. I'm going to, this is, this, this anniversary is going to be different. 
He doesn't really say how he's going to make it different. Uh, economics comics. I did not say testicular. I said titular. <laughs> testicular. <laughs> Meaning the, the title Holocaust. of the comic is Black Hammer. Hulk Nuts asked, uh, how's it feel? And the most interesting part of the show is when a panda is going to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I would argue that was probably the most interesting part of any episode of our show. So yeah, this is that's the most interesting thing on my channel. Dude, <laughs> it's gotta, not just one you show. Go, you gotta go. I won't be shamed for going to the bathroom. It's a natural <laughs> panda activity. Uh, You're lucky DS, that yeah, I you throw it at you. <laughs> Isn't that monkeys? Whatever. Same, same thing. <laughs> so the last three panels. They cut to sort of a Daily Planet type metropolis city with the with the the newspaper or, or a journalist, and the journalist is giving a whole different narration to a, a key moment ten years ago when the city's superheroes were battling and seemed to just vanish after they've defeated their foe in a big blinding light, and we realize that this girl is the daughter maybe of one of those heroes and is deeply interested in figuring out what happened to them. Which I think is my, you know, a good way to end the book because I think that's that's one of my favorite pages in the book, uh, in it kind of explaining a little bit about who the the characters are that we've been reading about for all these pages, and then yeah, she's she's the daughter of the Black Hammer, the the character who sacrificed himself, we, we you know to save everybody, uh, which still doesn't answer why they're trapped in this town and and what exactly happened and where where is this town even at. But I think it's a, a good enough way of circling back around to keep you interested enough to want to pick up the next issue. Yeah, it's the payoff, right, to all those pronouns, to all the subtlety, to all the things that were left out. They give you this big treat right at the end that like fills in a lot of blanks, but certainly not all of the blanks and leaves plenty of questions to, to, to like you're saying, to leave you wanting to come back. But that certainly pay off the idea that they were teasing us all along and not giving us any answers. And then they kind of just do a big kind of drop here at the end. They do a deuce right here at the end. <laughs> yeah. I, I have to say, John, um, you did a much more um, direct and succinct recap of that than we usually manage to. We usually are all over the place. And I'm usually yelling about exposition and... Well, I, I, I got I got some pretty quiet guys tonight. You know, uh, I got a I got a panda who's 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 taking a break, and uh, I'm just trying to keep it moving here. I had no, Indian I, food I, for dinner, and it's just, it's just you and Legend and his Taco Bell. Yeah, man. I, I love Taco Bell. I, I will say about Taco Bell. I'm not on one. <laughs> here, I thought you were gonna for sure say, "I'll tell you about Black Hammer." Let me get back on track, but no, no it was. No. <laughs> Ta Taco Bell is delicious. If you're not getting at least three cheesy gordita crunches when you go there, you're not living. Cheesy I'm gordita crunch. crunch. Best I'm item on the menu. Crunch. Best item like on the menu. It. Crunch wrap supreme. No, I like a incorrect. Wrap incorrect. Cheesy gordita crunch with some uh, Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Yes. And I have never gotten sick from a Taco Bell. No, Gray Banner Hulk says, I got issues is raising the bar. Economics and Comics says, I got to say, this chat is extremely entertaining. And also, John, I think you should have learned by now that the comic book is actually the least interesting part of our show. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, I thought you were going to get us back on track. It's like, no. People want to, people, you, people come here I for Taco Bell. I know that, I know that I'm Bell. never the most interesting part of our shows. <laughs> so Ta 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 Taco Bell menu recommendations. That's why people come to watch our show. The cheesier I, gordita crunch is where it's. I have something comic book related before we uh, move on to whatever, and and I I know Alec will like this. I don't know if he read it, but I know he'll like this. Um, they did a director's cut version of issue one of of Mister Miracle. Yeah, Ooh, I, I didn't I know remember that. when that came out, and I did not pick it up. Was it so worth it? What the what the to me it was because I love the series, but what I think was a, a transition from what we just read and what one of my biggest beefs with it is, is that when you read it, there's, there's certain parts that are in color, like a Schindler's list kind of thing. Like, Oh, we're going to, we're going to put things in color that stand out like that, that bathroom scene in the beginning of the book. Like they want you to oh, know, wow. like that's, that's blood. Like he just, he just did that. You know what I mean? 
That's intense. So I think that as you read through it, you know, they, they kind of add color in certain places, like if a TV is playing or if there's something that's really supposed to, like, stand out on the page. Right. You know, when he's in the chamber and he's doing that, like, trick where they think he, he gets, like, churned up into, like, blood and eaten. They, they made sure that you know, like, what's going on. So it's not just sort of this, like, blacked out thing. Yes, yeah, that, that Sin City color as a, as a weapon almost, right? Where, you know, the, when, they, when that yellow bastard shows up in Sin City, he's freaking yellow. That's like the, the – the, he's, like, yellow. Yeah, and then you see it in the you see it in the movie version even the way the color just appears in random powerful moments. Yeah, so, so the, the movie let me down because you don't see his dick. Well, here we go. <laughs> the girl's asleep. Sorry. Usually, John's the, usually John's the one who brings that up. So I'm a little surprised. Yeah, that's a some big blue dong. There's your, there's your there's your dick for you. Yeah. Yeah. Blue, blue hammer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I like the idea that they would use color in that powerful way. And I do think, I totally agree with you that this and Gideon Falls would have been better with at least some intelligent use of color. Yeah. I mean, that's my, you know, I know Sasquatch in the chat before was like, guys, enough already. There's no color. Deal with it. But I mean, I think if you read other books where there's splashes of color and things that are meaningful, I think just because it's a director's cut, I, I mean, I know I'm not an artist. I don't necessarily have the pedigree that you guys have in terms of art and film and all these other things. I'm just an idiot that likes comic books and panda masks. And uh <laughs> And to me, I don't understand why being a director's cut means like you have to be so artsy that you can't have color. I don't get it. I think they want to also just do something different with it, which I can respect that they want to offer something different. Like, you know, uh, when, when they did, what was it? Uh, Hush, Batman's Hush. They did a whole black and white version of that. And I think they just wanted to offer something different to be able to sell it again. I just wish that there was more thought put into it than just, hey, we'll just make it all black and white and sell it again. I also That's how know. I got hooked on crack when they wanted to offer something different <laughs> than, than cocaine, oh, like a more affordable option. <laughs> you know? Doesn't always Mo, well. I am Mo. I am not drunk. I, you guys are. I'm not JD. I'm not like drinking every time. No, I'm just kidding, JD. I, I'm <laughs> not drinking every time I'm on here. I have not had anything to drink tonight. This is I've normal me. Mixing, I've been mixing these two. Is that good? Oh Jesus. <laughs> I, I think you're supposed to, right? Isn't that on the label? Yeah, it says, it says operate heavy machinery immediately. <laughs> um, I also don't understand why they call it a director's cut for two reasons. Number one, comics don't have directors. Yeah. And number two, um, it's the same story just with like bonus features. So anything, if anything, it should be called like with Blu-ray extras. There's, a, there's It's not like there's any, <laughs> cut, there's no cutting happening. No. And there's no director. Very misleading. Also, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but uh, zero out of ten. I, I have four or five different directors' cut books, and I've never once read the script that's in the back. I don't know if anybody actually does, but I, I mean, I never I have comics, either. But I've only had two or three, I think. I read comics because I like pictures. If I wanted to just read writing, I'd be an adult and read like a real book. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Hulk Nuts says that. the director's cut's another sale for suckers. Yeah, well, we I'm suckered sucker all of you. Then. All right, Hulk. <laughs> Making you buy this book this week, if any, anybody did. Uh, Wing Nuts said uh, that we need to get back to uh, boobs and not uh, not onto wangs. <laughs> hey, this is an equal opportunity show. Yeah, man. Go ahead. Hey, John, don't leave me alone with this guy. Oh, <laughs> poof, you're back. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to come back with a bottle <laughs> of NyQuil. So uh, I will say, uh, it's not like uh, with Black Hammer, I can just say I'm going to put it on my pull list and get issue two because they're on what it. now? Yeah. Are they on issue eight? Pull, pull list, pull get list it, of Black pull Hammer. List, Black oh, Hammer. Pull, pull I'm going to pull that Black Hammer. No, so like, <laughs> I, what what issue are they on? Does anybody know? It ended. That story ended. So th they did Black Hammer, and then it progressed into other series. So like, um, out now is like. Uh, quantum something the world of black hammer and i think okay spoiler did like alert it. but it looks like the girl reporter picks up the mantle of her father because she's on the cover with it with it with it 
a hammer. I don't know. And there was yeah, a you Frankenstein one, one, right? Yeah, they did a couple different ones. It's all considered like the world, like the world of Black Hammer. So interesting. You know, this I guess, particular well, then one I would ended. say like. So I guess the question is not if you're gonna put it on your pull list, but like, are you gonna pick up a trade? Yeah, because that's the, for me. That's definitely where I am, and I would definitely put this high on a list of like trades that I'll be watching for. So yeah, so I have the trade for I think it's like the first five issues, and and in that five issues, it definitely expounds a lot more on like what exactly is going on, but it doesn't fully answer any of the questions, and and I've yet to pick up like the next part of it, but but I would if I was in the in the comic shop and I saw it. You know, 10, 10 bucks or so is, is what they go for. I mean, I don't think it's an unreasonable amount to pay for the story. Is there like how a complete many, edition out? Issues? Oh, sorry. So is there like a complete edition out? That's a good question. I, I don't I can't How remember. many issues were in the original run? Anybody know? Oh. In the chat? It's another good question. I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, my so daughter, I, I would my definitely... daughter drew a spider in the back of it. <laughs> a re that's a remark. Yeah. It's worth a lot of money. I'm going to get it slabbed. Can you slab <laughs> these? <laughs> I'm going to put it in a mystery box and send it out to somebody. Hey, I'll actually, I'll take that. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> yeah, so I would say the trade is definitely going to be something that I'm watching for uh, because I did really enjoy it. I do really like the, the possibilities for this sort of uh, extended universe, and I would be interested to see where it goes. So I I definitely liked it enough for that so amazon appears to be down awesome so i think the world's ending so it was That's lovely awesome. knowing both of you gentlemen <laughs> um, bottoms up yeah that or my internet is well no my internet's got to be fine so i'm talking to you I got, I got amazon just fine so it must be you east coasters so uh, there apparently if seems I to watch seems, hammer, I might get uh, in trouble with a teachers union or something. There seems to be a library edition. There's at least three volumes I see listed here in the trades. So um, all right. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it looks like three different trades just for Black Hammer. Um, so there is a hardcover library edition. That um, is issues one through thirteen. Okay. And Black Hammer Giants annual something. So that's got to be like the whole first run, I assume. Twenty-seven yeah, seven. Twenty-seven like seven. Twenty-seven seventy. Amazon Prime, or probably free from your library. Well, yeah, and issues. You were saying that like there were several spinoff titles because I noticed several other like. You know, uh, you know, Black Hammer colon something or other. You know, Black, Black yeah, Hammer. Yeah, there, there's one that only started like four or five months ago. I think I, I think it's like Quantum Realm or something like that. Not yeah, I saw with uh, with Quantum Leap starring Scott Bakula. Great TV show. Do you have it? Oh man, that's awesome. There's also a great "It's Always Sunny" episode that uh, references Quantum Leap and Scott Bakula's in it. I've never, freaking I've love never seen Quantum Leap, show. dude. Um, Quantum Leap is freaking awesome. Never seen Quantum Leap. We've never seen Sunny. I've never seen Sunny. I've obviously seen Quantum Leap. What am I, an idiot? <laughs> I don't know. You're dressed as a panda on YouTube. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? <laughs> uh, so, Sunny's an excellent show. You should you should check it out. You'll enjoy it. Another good sci-fi show, Sliders, starring yes. Jerry O'Connell. So that funny. I got a funny story about Sliders. I met um, John Reese Davies at a Comic Con. I thought you could say at uh, White Castle. I was just going to say some of the sliders at White Castle. But that, yeah. I'd be back on the. Oh man, I, I missed I that joke. Go back to the toilet, just just uh, thinking about sliders. Um, oh, Hulk nuts! Hulk nuts! You might have to leave. He's saying that uh, that it's a way better show than Lost. <laughs> Out! Out! Um. So, so sorry you. You met. I met John Reese Davies, and I got his autograph. It was right after, right around when Lord of the Rings was out. Rings, yeah. And all his handlers were like, "Oh, don't talk to him about sliders," because I don't know. I guess he didn't like that show for some reason. Wow. He gets really angry. So, but I was like, you know what? I was a big fan of that show. Like, I liked him a lot in it. So when I went up, like, I had him sign a Lord of the Rings thing, and I was like, "Hey, I really liked you in sliders." He was like, "Well, thank you." 
He's like perfectly polite about it. Huh. But probably yeah, afterward, he's he, like, and then he murdered one of his handlers. That yeah, he's probably him. like, <laughs> what did I tell you? Kick that, <laughs> kick that kid out. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, yeah, I, I, he's probably just glad people aren't still talking to him about Raiders of the Lost Ark every time they see him. Bad dates. <laughs> so <clears throat> we have a topic for discussion. Um, uh, now that we've uh, we all agreed that it's definitely something we're going to continue to read or seek out. Yeah, what's the deal with bamboo? It's delicious. It's strong. It Nutritious. Grows, uh, it grows yeah. very fast. You can hear it growing. Did you know that? I didn't know that. No, I, I'm too busy eating it. It's crunchy. Yeah, I guess so. That, fair enough. <laughs> so, our topic for discussion was about horror and our favorite uh, v versions of horror in film or television or comics that we've seen. The one that was the most meaningful or the one the most powerful, or the one that we enjoyed the most. Uh, did anybody have one they wanted to throw out first? Not, not your poops issues. What's that? <laughs> you said not your poops. I, I, should have, I should have been prepared for this. Hold on one second. My, my favorite horror movie of all time is definitely Leprechaun in the Hood. I think that that's probably, hands down, scary, <laughs> scariest thing I've ever seen. Sasquatch 210 thought I said horrors. Horror. Horse. Not Horse. not whores. Horror. Yeah. I got I got I got I have more stories about whores than I do about the horror. <laughs> I mean we could make a whole nother I, show. Do you have any horror stories about whores? No, but yeah, he, yeah. Uh, a, a couple, yeah. You know. Are there any other kinds it. of stories? <laughs> Yeah, they're all pretty bad. The thing John Carpenter, Tony Sanders always drop already dropping yes. Leprechaun. Uh, the so I got a funny story about the thing from John Carpenter as well. Let's hear it. Oh, I'm thank waiting. you. Yeah. Um, so at the beginning, when the Norwegians are running towards the plane, and you know you don't know what they're saying, but if you speak Norwegian, they're saying it's the dog, it's the dog. Like, be careful. Like he's gonna. And so it spoils the whole movie if you speak if language. You speak Norwegian. So all all ten of the people who saw the film that spoke Norwegian were really spoiled. How do you, Nor Norway is a fine, beautiful, flush country full of many people. <laughs> I was and, Ike and IKEA, right? And Hulk nuts. You know, I was gonna definitely say that was uh, high on my list as far as uh, as my some of my favorite horror is John Carpenter. Anything John Carpenter is gonna be high on my list. Um, the original Halloween, obviously, is just top notch picture. And when I was when I was in film school, everybody was making horror. I've kind of complained about this a bunch, where it was like it was cheap and easy. Everybody could just grab a camera and go try to make something scary. And then when I went and worked at a film festival, it was like everybody was turning in horror movies. Now look, hey, it's just the John Show. Everybody's gone. So hey, everybody, how's it going? I start talking and I clear the room. Everybody's just gone, just emptiness. So uh, oh, that was everyone awesome. left you. I'm sorry. And that's um, the meaning of life. That's the that's oh, what's the most important thing you'll on. ever hear. Oh on man, the show. I it. It's forty two. I already know. <laughs> no, four, eight, fifteen, sixteen, twenty three, forty two. You yeah. know what's funny? I'm wearing this. Is a, do you see that? Oh, the, the screen. screen. Yeah. Which is funny because it's horror and um, and the, it's black and white. And the Monk Museum is in uh, Norway. It's in Oslo. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the knowledge drop in here. <laughs> I usually hold it back because I don't want to intimidate you guys. But but anyways, the, my favorite horror movie will probably be uh, Silence of the Lambs. That's a good one. I freaking love it. It's a great book, too. The whole, you know, Red Dragon is another great book by uh, the same author. But, uh, Did I, you I, see I, the original Red Dragon movie? Manhunter. Yeah, that's t it's terrible. A lot, a lot of uh, They Live uh, recommendations in the chat. With a uh, Roddy Rowdy Piper. Manhunter is a great movie. Uh, they butcher the ending, but it's a really good movie. Uh, not a, not well, good this movie. this coming from a panda who thinks Ghostbusters 2 is a good movie. I didn't just call it one dumb. Just, I, I, that was pure sarcasm. I'm a I'm a absolute buffoon. First of all, Ghostbusters 2 is a, is a good movie. <laughs> I'll, fi I'll fight you. <laughs> 
Um, so bear, I've got bear I'm, fight, shirtless bear fighter. There you go. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre, original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is my favorite horror movie of all time. That is a masterpiece. But Tremors. I've got Tremors is great. I've got two other film recommendations and uh, a comic recommendation. Uh, Suspiria by Dario Argento. Ooh, wow. Old school. Um, Love it. Yeah. Super great Italian horror. This comes with the soundtrack by Goblin, and uh, which rules. And um, this is number 249 of 60,000. I don't know if you can see that, but humble brag. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> when I worked at uh, a store that I uh, uh, that sold, I, I had a different version of this and this one came in used and I was like, I'll just swap mine out because no one cares about the number. So kind of got that one from myself. Great movies being thrown out. I see uh, The Birds. I love a good Hitchcock, you know, reference. Uh, Rear Window is a great movie. Vertigo, great movie. The Shining getting thrown out. Hobo with a shotgun. <laughs> Don't get that reference a lot. And then TJ Watson coming to my aid here. Manhunter is a great movie. And then he also says, though, that Mary Poppins is his favorite. I don't know if that's a horror, though. I don't know if that's going to qualify. If no one is familiar with this movie, you should go and watch it right now. I have to say, I went to film school, and I am not familiar with it. It is uh, quite excellent. It's Criterion Edition, but you can get it super cheap or probably find it for free somewhere. But uh, Carnival of Souls. Writing it down. It is from 60-something, 60 62, black and white. Uh, what's, the, what's the filmmaker? Uh, his name that? is um, Herc Harvey. And he, before making this, made industrial education films. <laughs> this sounds like a, a Christopher Guest movie. <laughs> um, and for my comic recommendation... No surprise, indie book, Black Hole. Black Hole, uh, what? Yeah. The Black Hammer and the Black Hole. Yeah. Oh, you know, man. put those two together. You got you got your work cut out for you. But oh, uh, this is about... It's uh like throwing a penny into the Grand Canyon. <laughs> this is uh, about STDs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> of course it is. Reminds but, uh, me of my worst ever horror story. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, an absolute masterpiece by Charles Burns. And my trade is downstairs right now. But uh, yeah, super Com great. Comic Hat 84 mentions that we it's a shocking omission that nobody even talked about The Exorcist at this point because that is a, a, a masterpiece, absolutely. And nobody came to my aid on, uh, on uh, Ghostbusters 2 being a complete debacle of a motion picture. It's because you're wrong. Um, I'm waiting for somebody to even talk about it. I have read the first couple issues of Regression. Um, I liked what I read, but I didn't stick with it because I don't stick with most things. Like, I, I don't know. I Nowadays, I, like a, a comic like really has to grab me to get me to buy it every month. So every, every year around Halloween, as far as comic book goes, uh, they, they put out a, like a little anthology, and it's a John Carpenter's Tales for a Halloween Night. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that before, but it's kind of like a, they do different volumes. It comes out around Halloween every year. So this is this year's version, volume four. And That's as far cool. as like horror stuff goes, if you're into that kind of stuff, like it's a bunch of different stories. Um, it's, it's a pretty good read, and they're, you know, they're not crazy expensive. This one's signed by John Carpenter. So that's cool. Nice. Uh, best John Carpenter movie, though? Big Trouble in Little China. It is a masterpiece. Um, I, I have a hard time hating on The Thing. I mean, I just, I would put it above that. No, the, thing, the Thing is great, but Big Trouble in Little China's got it all. It, it does have a lot going for it. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. In his heyday. I mean, the, those guys, I mean, we even talk about Escape from New York, but they did some great movies together. Agreed. David Lopan. Yeah, someone agreed with me. Well, Jason it seems like everybody's also collecting. agreeing with the panda on Ghostbusters 2, so I'm shocked to find that there are that many people that like Ghostbusters 2 in the world. <laughs> hey, man, people like blood sausage. 
I love that's from I, that's from that's Groundhog from Groundhog Day. Day. Groundhog Day. I, yeah, I got you. Oh, I got Nailed you, Alec. I got you. Nailed it. Captain Ron. Now we're getting off the rails. Everybody's <laughs> jumping on. Now we're just naming Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell now movies. Tango and Cash. Tango and Cash. That's a good one. So, um, uh, real quickly, uh, do we want to uh, comment on what's going on on each other's channels, real quick, before we sell what's uh, what's going on next week? Yeah. I know that the panda has got an upcoming live stream again with Hulk, the twenty sixth, the twenty fifth, twenty fifth. I don't know. Next Friday. Okay. It's, uh, it's our second live show. Um, it's called. Uh, I think we're calling this one. You won't like me when you damage my comics. We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, crappy shipping and and jerk sellers. Uh, that's kind of going to be our little bit of our rant amongst other things that we're that we're going to talk about and uh and also uh you want to tune in because i recently did a golden apple giveaway which for some reason people were messaging me and thought like i worked for golden apple and asking me for like <laughs> directions to the store i just really love them i've ordered from everyone online sanctum sanctorum unknown comics everybody and golden apple by far has had the best customer service and they package their stuff super secure. And if you have an issue, that they're on top of it right away. So I big them up on my page and they gave me a bunch of free stuff because of it, which was awesome. That's and awesome. Thought, yeah. Why not pass that along? And I did a little contest. Like if you go and buy something from Golden Apple, even if it's only five bucks, you don't have to spend a lot of money. I'll enter you into this contest and we'll, and we'll give some cool stuff away. Some of my personal stuff, some signed books, some slabs, just to, you know, have some fun. And, and not a lot of people entered, surprisingly. And, uh, and Hulk Nuts actually won third place, which was five comics from my collection. But because he's my co-host and my friend and, and we don't want to make it look like uh, it was some sort of setup, which it wasn't because I used one of those dice rolling things that everybody loves. Hulk's going <laughs> to give away his prize package on our next live show. So you should have just sent him a whole that. bunch of Squirrel Girl. You, you were set well, up, man. You I said set. that I was going to do that. So I think that's why all of a sudden he became so noble and wanted to give <laughs> the prize package away. Oh, no, we'll give it away on the show. To a, to a you had the perfect opportunity. Yeah, man. I mean, he's, you know, he wishes I would send him Squirrel Girl stuff. <laughs> guy. You know, you know he's got the whole run. So yeah, so that's that's what I have upcoming with uh, with Hulk. So that's if you go again, if you go in the description for this video, you'll see the link to to I Got Issues channel, Hulk Nuts channel, and to the video they did their first live stream. You can go and just watch that video as well, and give them a like and a comment as there as well. Just drop them a line. Um, thanks, so thanks definitely that. do that. Thanks for linking my channel too. Well, always. Don't yeah. I usually? Did you not? I do usually. I always do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's what I do for that's what I do for my co-host. <laughs> Fair enough. So Alec, do you have anything coming? I know you were just on my channel last night when we were doing that epic unboxing, but do you have anything? Yeah, the, the impromptu unboxing. Do you have anything uh, coming up here soon? Nah, man. I got I got book club next week. But nothing yes, else. Because you're hosting next week. Yes. I'm and hosting we're... next week. Book club. I'll be here. <laughs> On Panda's channel. On my channel. I got pandas. We'll be, reading, we'll be reading a special book that was requested by my good buddy, uh, Hulk Nuts, issue number uh, 40. Is that 40? Yeah, issue number 40 of The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Look at that tail. So if you want to tune in and talk about it, we'll be here <laughs> next week, next Wednesday. Yeah, he, he really likes to review that one. Yeah, it's a good book. I love I love the dedication that you actually bought that book to taunt him with it. <laughs> What's well, gonna be a constant joke piece? He's able to pull that out at any time. Yeah. I mailed him Squirrel Girl toys to his house. You, you think I don't have commitment to the crap? <laughs> I've I've got a consistent joke piece too. <laughs> All right. So what's uh I can't even remember what we're doing next week. What's going on next week? Uh we're doing um a a little known book that probably no one is gonna pick up. Uh, by a, a new writer that not many people have probably heard of. Yeah, His no. name's uh, Donnie Cates, and the book is called Guardians of the something, Guardians of the Universe. Galaxy. Oh, that's the one, Come Guardians on. of the Galaxy, by Donnie Cates, number one. And uh, our guest finally coming back as if he never left, 
comic books nyc yeah finally gonna finally gonna fill that void in our lives so this time we had a we had a guy all panned it up next time we're just gonna have the voice just the voice yeah the voice in the book <laughs> yes hulk nuts i know i'm on your list of your favorite things ever i'm i'm on your list yes i am <laughs> JD um, would like JD would like this. There's a Bernie Wrightson cover, hidden gem cover for next week's Guardian of the Galaxy. Is there? So JD, nice. if you're watching, this is for you. What's the ratio on that one? It's a regular. Uh, it's a regular price cover. Ooh. Yeah. Can't beat that. Nope. Um, as far as for me, um, I, obviously Saturday it'll be me with the girls. I got uh, a Saturday morning comics with them, and then. I've got a couple of those uh, Boy Who Had Seven mystery boxes coming that I'm going to unbox hopefully tomorrow evening somewhere. Um, then on Tuesday night, I am doing a show with Jeffrey Comic Con and Fire Guy Ryan. It is our newest top five. So I'm. Uh, this is the first you're hearing of it right now. Uh, we are doing. Uh, we're going back to comics, but this time we're doing. So we did our first one was on favorite villains. Second one was on episodes of Lost. This time we're back to comics. We're doing favorite comic book movie performances. So we're looking at actors in comic book movies that the best performances uh, in, in comic book movies. So we're going to break that down with Jeffrey and Ryan, and that'll be on Tuesday night. And you'll be hearing a lot of uh, announcements as we get closer to that. Um, very cool. And sooner or later, I'm going to twist your arm and make you do that Battlestar episode of that. I'm saying I didn't want to do back-to-back -back TV shows. Oh, that's fine. We're that's trying fine. to get it as varied as possible. And Ryan needs to re-watch re because I'm yeah. ready. I have my... Oh, I, I got my five. Like, I got my five. Off, off the dome. Off the dome. I didn't have to think about it. It was just boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. No, that's a different show. That's from The Office. No, I know what that's from. Thanks. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for coming, and uh, and thank you. I got issues for for trolling in person this time. It was much appreciated. Uh, you you guys, you and Hulk Nuts, nobody does chats like you guys. You guys are a riot, and you're a lot of fun. And it was really great to have you on. Well, Hulk Nuts has experience as a cam girl, so it's easy for him. <laughs> I noticed he only ever shows neck up. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, you have, you have no to pants. pay for the. We have, a, we have a firm no pants rule. You have to pay for the Patreon to get neck down. <laughs> yeah, it's seven ninety nine a month. <laughs> oh well, thanks everybody. You just aim the camera at the crotch, so it doesn't even matter if I'm wearing the panda mask. <laughs> Do you have a little panda mask? Yeah, just a. It goes right on the tip. On the tip. It just. <laughs> And the, yeah, it just says Black Hammer. Yeah, that's it. I can only fit like two letters on there, but yeah, sure. It says B, B H. Yeah, oh, my God. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next Wednesday on Alex's channel. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this night or at least just suffered through it well enough with us. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. Bye.